These days, I find myself buying less and less AliExpress watches. It's not that I don't really appreciate the value because in terms of value and specs, as a ratio, it's pretty much unbeatable. I just tend to be favoring brands with a little bit more story and a little bit more history. But I do still keep my eye on AliExpress and I find myself gravitating towards watches on there, either original in design or for homages, but not straight one for one copies, something that has its own unique twist. And the watch today is in the second category, so a lot of the parts you might recognize, but the dial is something fun, it's something interesting, and it could be a great winter watch as well. A lot of the Proxima watches sit around the $200 mark, and I think this is a good sweet spot on AliExpress for value, and I've always been a big fan of their watches, they always seem to have great build quality and pretty good loom as well. The question is, will today's winter wonder live up to expectation? Should we have a look? So looking at the Proxima, what we've got is a perfect proportion here, 40-20, 40, 20, 40 millimeters diameter, 20 millimeter lug width. And because of this, it sits nicely on the wrist, as you'll see later on. 14.7 millimeters thick. It sounds like a lot, but this is a top hat crystal, so cut it some slack. It's worth it for that beautiful piece of top hat sapphire and all the distortions that come along with that. Lug to lug is a reasonable 48.2 millimeters. And of course, the reason this might be the winter watch is of course that snowflake dial. No, I probably can't use the word snowflake. That's somebody else's, but you know what I mean. These are snow flakes on the dial, albeit not in texture. Either way, it makes an interesting effect. Looking a little bit closer at the dial, you've got applied indices here filled with loom. The Proxima logo, which itself is applied, but the text Proxima and automatic is printed. And on the right hand side, you've got a nice date window with a polished metallic outline, which blends in nicely there or as nice as it can do, I think, with the indices. All of the hands today are polished, which matches the edges of the indices and the date window on the right-hand side of the dial. And there's a sort of semi-skeletonization. The tips of the arrow and the minute hand are slightly cut out, and then you've got an arrow type seconds hand, which does run all the way to the edge of the dial. So props to Proxima for getting that bang on. One of the nice things about this dial is that there's minimal text printed on it. I'm especially not a fan of textbooks and paragraphs written out on dials, and especially on homages, it just looks super cheap and super tacky to me. So I'm grateful to see minimal text on this one. In terms of the dial itself, this is a flat dial, and it has a kind of metallic reflective portions in the shape of the snowflakes on it. It's hard to describe. It's easier when you see it on video. The bezel on this one is, as you would expect, based on the case type. If you know what watch this case came off originally, you'll know the bezel and the bezel insert match pretty well with this theme. These are stock parts, so nothing particularly original here, but it does work with the theme of the watch. Top surface of the case has a radial brushing on it, and the sides have polish. It's a simple case, there's no special chamfers or anything, relatively boxy and the transitions are relatively good. Not San Martin crisp, but pretty good. You have to get under a strong loop to sort of see any rough edges between the polishing and the brushing there. So day to day, again, it's all that you need it to be, especially at this price point. Crown on this is lovely because it is large. It's very easy to grip, very easy to unscrew, wind and set the movement. And it has a nice engraving on the side, although the Proxima logo on the side isn't the same one that's on the dial, so it does confuse me slightly. Case back is nicely engraved with two stingrays, I think it is, and then it says automatic, 316L, sapphire crystal, and limited edition. Not sure about the limited edition, technically anything could be a limited edition if you don't set a number, because you're only going to make so many before you stop production. Feels a bit lazy with this, no information on how many they're making, no numbers on there. So take limited edition, I think, with a pinch of salt. 
and beating inside of this one is the PT5000. Not my favorite movement, but we'll talk about that in the pros and cons. Bezel insert on this one is loomed and bezel action, well, have a listen. It's a pleasing action for me. It's springy, but it doesn't particularly have a lot of back play because it seems to spring back into the correct place. In terms of alignment on this, it's quite difficult to tell alignment exactly with top hat sapphires. You have to get the angle perfect. For me, this one is ever so slightly offset to the right, but it's marginal and that distorted crystal really does help hide any slight offset on the bezel insert. But overall, considering the price, I'm happy with what I've got here. In terms of loom, it's going up against my other Proxima, which is actually the only other AliExpress watch I have in my collection right now. The original brown MM style Proxima here is my loom champion. So I've got high expectations for this Proxima as well, and it doesn't disappoint. It's not quite as bright, but it does look really nice. It is long lasting, and I don't think you'll be disappointed, but it doesn't knock the loom champion off of the perch. In terms of pros with this watch, I really like the big crown. I mentioned it earlier. It's really nice to have something that's easy to grip, fits in nicely with the watch. It doesn't look oversized, but it's a pleasure to use. I really don't like small crowns on automatic watches because mine tend to sit to the side and I do have to actually use them to set the time fairly regularly. I also really like the design on this. And by the design, I mean the bit that Proxim has done themselves, which of course is this dial. And I think there's enough originality here to give the watch its own feel and take it a little bit away from the watch that it's homaging. One notable point is the blue AR crystal here is fantastic. This top hat sapphire is really nicely made. It gives you beautiful distortions. I think the crystal could be my favorite part of the watch and it's what gives it the most character. The provided bracelet for me is a miss. The links are really big and this means it doesn't articulate particularly well and doesn't feel so comfortable on the wrist. So to be honest, I wouldn't bother with the bracelet. It's nothing to write home about. I think you're far better with your own bracelet or strap on this one. Another downside for me, a slight one I guess anyway, is the PT5000. I'm not the biggest fan of this movement. It has known issues with the winding mechanism. Overuse of that does seem to cause premature wear and failure. I haven't personally had one fail, but I've seen too many stories online in forums of people that have. So it makes me cautious with this movement. I'd rather have a Miyota 9 series or a Seiko NH movement, um, but in this case, the PT5000 is the value offering and I wouldn't spend any more on this watch. Anyway, that's everything that I can think of that's important on this Proxima. Let's come to a conclusion. Yes or no, this is your last chance. Don't beat around the bush. In conclusion, I think this is a fun dive watch. Yes, it's a homage, but I like the original twist. I think the dial is good fun. It looks interesting on the wrist. And as long as you get a good price on it, I think you can discard the bracelet and either put it onto an alternative bracelet like I have, or dig out some leather or a Tropic, whatever takes your fancy. It's going to be easy, it's nice colours to work with, it's a 20mm lug whip and you've got a cracking watch for a good price and something that isn't a straight copy and that's really important I think. On a side note, I do struggle with some of the AliExpress brands. Some of the brand names in particular are things that, as you and I know in English, don't sound very appealing. Proxima is not a name that I love or like or have any feeling towards but it's definitely not insulting. I feel very neutral about it so Again, I'm quite happy to wear the brand on my wrist. It doesn't evoke any negative emotion. What do you think about the brand name? What do you think about Proxima watches? And what's your favorite AliExpress brand? Feel free to let me know all of these in the comments. I always try and read them and reply and thoroughly enjoy conversation with fellow watch enthusiasts. If you are new to the channel, a sub would get my bezel clicking. And uh, if you like the video, please, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I'll see you on the next video, which may just be one of my favorite releases of the entire year. 
And on that, I will leave you. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.